not been stressing us. He has been polishing us. He has not been punishing us. He's been training us. He has not been straining us. Today is the 14th day of this prayer and fast. Just seven more days to go. And answers are coming from left, right, center. Did you hear the testimony today? Somebody said, I've been waiting for my posting since. But this prayer, I just asked God, this is my posting, how far? Now he's posted. Others are still waiting. That's the exemption. Amen. All manner of miracles, testimonies. Somebody came in here last Sunday, 17 years, witchcraft affliction ended just like that. Somebody said, I asked for a miracle job. <laughs> the first day, third day, it came with a lot to follow. Do you hear the testimony of that young girl? Fire, but you don't understand. You may not understand. Go and go to orthopedic hospital and check other people that have such. You will see the traces. Now, nothing like it. If that has happened, it could have disfigured that beautiful girl. But God said no. Miracle contract. You hear that, brother? He said, I came to pass. I said, God, Pastor. He said, He's the only one, you. His own was one million more than others. But they still say, You are the one that will do it. That's why I say, I'm not a missus. She was showing us her ring. Just like that. <laughs> There's nothing this God cannot do. We, can't, we couldn't take all the testimonies. We managed to take 16. We couldn't take all of them. Your own will come too. The same God will answer you. For all these and many more, the ones that are not shared are more than the ones that are shared. I know. I know the one. They come to whisper to me, Pastor God, will you share it? Mm -mm. Pastor, hold on. So when I tell you the ones that are not shared are more than the ones shared, I know. Because you have not shared your own. Why not lift your hand, lift your voice, let's appreciate this God together. Let's exalt him. You can pray, but you cannot answer it. It's because of his mercy that we are not consumed. Miracle breakthrough. Somebody said, I paid my Shiloh sacrifice, go open a new door business. Now from a shop to a supermarket. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. You have done all things well. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Law. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for answers. Thank you for breakthroughs. Thank you for healings. Thank you, Jesus, for preservation. Thank you, Jesus, for overturning every evil occurrence, for exemptions. To you be all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are Yahweh.
glory. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, Alpha and Omega. Thank you, I am that I am. Father, we have come to you again today. Do your work, your strength work. Bring to pass your heart, your strength heart. Because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Father, take all the glory. Answer questions in our heart today. Let no one return our shame. Thank you, Father, for establishing more testimonies to the glory of your name. In Jesus' matchless name, we are worshiped. Please put your beautiful hands together for Jesus, for Jesus, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the best place to be. Father, we thank you. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, this is our special anointing service. It's also our Precious Andrews Harvest Sunday and our covenant day of exemption. We've been joining in this subject, understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting. Look at part 2A in the first service, please. I want you to get the teaching of the first service, please do, because we can't go back to mention of the foundation we'll try to lay there. We want to build up on that now in this second service. Understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting, part 2B. God will distinguish between you and others in Jesus' name. What others suffer, you will not suffer it. You will be highly preferred and favored in Jesus' mighty name. Now I want to start by reminding us again that the commandments of God are for our profiting. You and I, we are too small for God to target, to bring down. Anything he tells us to do, it is for our profiting. It's for our lifting. He said, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and observe to do his commandment, which I command you this day, the Lord thy God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. And these blessings will come upon thee and overtake you. So every commandment of God is for us to become a commander of his blessing. Deuteronomy 28, 1-2. 1 John 5, 3-2 told us, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandment, and his commandments are not grievous. The commandments of God are not grievous. They are gracious. The commandments of God are for our profiting. All these things are for our profiting. For all scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction unto righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished and may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. So, every commandment of God is for our profiting. And God has commanded us this period to fast and pray. It is not a grievous commandment is a gracious commandment through this fasting and prayer you will change levels in jesus name and we see that everything god commands is for our benefit you know our profiting so there are benefits dividends of prayer and fasting you can see that summarized in isaiah 58 6 to 14 he says, not the fast that I have chosen. Don't do the heavy burden. So every scriptural fast, we undo certain things. There are certain things that need to be undone in your life. They will be undone in Jesus' name. To lose the pounds of wickedness. The wickedness of the wicked over your life and your family will come to an end. To let your press go free. Did you hear that today? 17 years of witchcraft manipulation ended last Sunday. 17 years, not 17 days. To let your press go free. That ye break every yoke. Every yoke of generational poverty. Yoke of sicknesses, diseases. Yokes of oppression will be ended. Can I pray for you? You shall be far from oppression. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every scripture of our, he said in verse 8 that your head will spring forth speedily. Your light will go out of every obscurity. 
Your righteousness in verse 9 will go before you and it will call and it will answer you. Do you know what it is? You can pray but you can't answer it. So if God gives you the opportunity and the prayer advantage and when you call he answers, ah, that's a very big breakthrough. Many people pray but they still suffer prayer frustration. That's why they don't even pray against them. Glory to God. You went ahead in verse 11 that the law will guide thee continually. So you enjoy direction. Direction is one of the universal craves today. Everyone needs direction. If you are not well directed, you can be, you can miss the road in the journey of life. You need direction. Every form of misdirection is ended here today in Jesus' name. He said, I will instruct you the way to go. I will lead you in the way to go. You know, it's God that teaches us to profit. If God is not instructing you, you'll be losing. Every loss is a function of lack of divine direction. Every lack is a function of lack of divine direction. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So if you are lacking, you, are, you lack divine direction. Psalm 23 verse 1. And one of the things fasting does, he said, the Lord will guide thee continually. Continually. He said, you will build the old waste places. And he will give you the heritage of your father, Jacob. Oh, my no blessings. When you get back home, just study that Isaiah 58, 6 to 14. That's the scripture for fasting. Hallelujah. But you see, there's nothing God commands us to do that we will not play our own part. For every promise of God, there is a man war responsibility and there is a God war responsibility. Say, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, you shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do his commandment. So, there is a condition for the blessing. That's why in this prayer and fasting, none of us should sell our birthright like Esau, who for a muzzle of meat. <laughs> he said, No, what is bad right? Give me food, let me eat. The truth is that he couldn't have died if he didn't eat that food. Even if you are asking, Why can't you go and ask your mother? Is Jacob your mother? What do you go? You know, women, women here, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you always have some extra, some something somewhere, somehow, in case of emergency. Could have gone to ask the mother, the mother will give him something to eat, save, to hold him. He sold his bad right free of charge. That will never be a portion in Jesus' name. So anything that you to cry in your stomach, you say this fasting, oh, you're fasting, you can't, you can't, you can't you see food, you know, eat me, eat me, eat me. I bind it in Jesus' name. <laughs> it is also pertinent to note and state here that regardless of your fasting, if you are not praying, the fasting has no value. What makes the fasting valuable is the prayer. In every religion, people fast. Is it okay? So, <laughs> it's the prayer inside, the prayer content of your fasting that makes it valuable, that brings the results. So, if you deny yourself food from morning to night and you don't pray, you have not done anything, you only saved your food. That's hunger strike. That's economic measure. Now look at it. Understand something about prayer and fasting. And why they go hand in hand. They are complementary goods. Now. If you have seen any hunter before. They have their own strategy. Hunters. Some go with bow and arrow. Hmm? You know that arrow if they hit a target an animal hmm? the animal can carry the arrow and run away they may go and die somewhere so that one no problem you, but the man has missed the catch are you getting me now so you know what they do they bring the arrow they look for a poisonous something and put it in the head of the arrow so that when the arrow touches the animal, it will drop there. Fasting is like that poisonous thing you put in your prayer. 
than when he hit the devil or his target. Are you getting me now? I was just stating in the first service, this is important for us to know because we need understanding. That it's not what you have stemmed from that makes you to grow. It's what you eat that makes you to grow. Physically speaking, it's what you eat. If you see somebody feeding well, you can see it from the skin. That's why they, some of them, they catch you on the road, they start begging you money. You say, hey, why are they disturbing me? Begging me for they look at your skin, they know that this one is eating well. Because <laughs> if you see somebody that's not eating well with kwashoko, the stomach will be one side, the face will be one side, the head will be one side. So that's not somebody to disturb, to beg for money. So it's your body that is selling you out. So I don't know, every time they're begging me for money, you look like it. But what you eat is what nourishes you. So just like food nourishes this flesh to grow. Now, there is something your spirit eats that nourishes the spirit. It is called the word of God. It's also spirit. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is spirit. That's the food your spirit eats. The day you understand this, you start growing spiritually. And the more you grow spiritually, the more authority you have. And the more authority you have, the more you can dispense if, uh, darkness. Now, so it is not just abstaining from food, drinks, and pleasure. What are you eating? Because the essence of fast is for us to deny this flesh its own food. Because when he eats his own food, he will start misbehaving and being carnal. So you deny the flesh of food and physical comfort, but you must be feeding your spirit, man. With the word of God. And then fire the world with prayer. Then you discover you are growing spiritual stamina. Did you understand that? Please, this is the process. If you don't do this, you can open yourself to negative spiritual powers. Which may even be dangerous. That's why you have seen some people fast before. They kulu. That's the reason. You say, but this man is spiritual. He's not spiritual. He was not feeding his spirit. He was only denying himself flesh. Do you understand? As a matter of fact, the, if you deny this body too much uh, glucose, it, something can happen. So, you must be feeding the spirit man, which is the real you, with the word of God. This is just by the way. So, so that your fasting can be what? Fruitful. So, gather books in the area of your need. Don't be a general student. You know your need. As our faces are different, so our needs. You know the area you need. If, it's the, if you are looking for health, go and buy get books on health. If you are looking for financial breakthrough, if you are looking for marital breakthrough, if you are looking for family harmony, look for materials on that. Go to the bookshop. Buy books. The bookshop is your spiritual pharmacy. Just like you go to the pharmacy to pick the drugs you need for, to treat one ailment or the other. You go to the bookshop to pick books that will treat different areas of your life. And then you focus on them. And as you keep eating from that, buy tapes, CDs. You carry your Bible. As you search, you are now feeding your spirit man. And as your spirit man is eating, you discover you are developing some spiritual muscle. Glory to God. May God give us understanding. In Jesus' mighty name. But the question we've been asking and we've been providing answer to is what is the biblical approach to profitable fasting if I know the commandment of God is profitable and I know what fasting and prayer can do how do I approach this fasting so that it can be profitable to me because your approach also matters <laughs> So number one, you must come to God thanking, praising, and worshiping. Psalm 100 verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his cause with praise. And 
Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So that describes to us the process. You come with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving will leave you at the gate. You enter the cause with praise. But if you want to enter the inner, in the holy of holies, <laughs> where the golden censer is, where the manna is, where the candlesticks are, oh, you must enter with worship. Bless his name. That's worship. Many people don't understand there are two things about prayer. There is a platform dimension of prayer. There is a process dimension of prayer. <laughs> you know, you can climb a platform like as I'm here now. Very soon I will come down from it. But a process is a continuous thing. So when you are, if you understand the process, you discover that you can develop a relationship with God. I told them in the first service, I say relationship is a currency. There are three currencies in the world. Hmm? Number one is money. It's the least currency. And that's what people are pursuing. And they are not even seeing it. As you are pursuing it, it's running away. The second one is relationship and attention. The third one is faith. It's the highest currency. The day you understand how to use faith and put it to work, it can buy for you what money can buy, what money cannot buy. They are all currencies. I spend more faith and relationship than money. When I get money, I know what to do with it. <laughs> now, hear me. In prayer, if you want God to give you attention, come with thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. From there, you graduate to praise. Glory be to my God. Hallelujah. Then from praise, you enter into worship. Worship is a place of romance between divinity and humanity. It is in worship. Now, there are two things about prayer. That's why you must understand this dimension. In prayer, you can get God answering your needs. That's the intervention. Or you can have an experience change. Jesus prayed. The Bible said the, 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 his countenance changed. There was a transfiguration. That doesn't happen just by asking God, give me, give me, give me. That happens in the place of worship. If you're a true worshiper, you discover that sometimes you come out, you just, they will know that this man has come out of prayer. In short, your eyes will change, many things will change. So there are, you get things in prayer or you are changed in prayer. The things you get can finish, but the change you get in prayer cannot finish. This is another dimension we need to understand about prayer. Baby Christians go there to get, Lord, give me a car, give me a house, give me a wife. <laughs> but mature believers go there to seek for a change. A change is transformational. It's eternal. Any encounter you receive by change, no return match. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And such happens in the place of worship. That is where you can decrease and he will increase. It's in the place of worship. John said, I must decrease and you must increase. And the more you decrease, the more God feeds you. And the more of God you have, the more wonderful things you see. May God give us understanding. So you come thanking, praising, and worshiping. Now let's go back to the, our Lord's prayer. Jesus taught them. He said, teach us how to pray. It was how. It was a pattern. It wasn't a prayer per se. And in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9, he started to titan. Our Father who art in heaven. I told them in the first service, I don't want to go back, please get the teaching. That our Father signifies a relationship. You can't call a stranger our Father. 
You can't. The way you relate with a stranger is different from the way you relate with your father. So there must be a father-son, father-daughter relationship. And if you are not used to it, you won't even go there. You won't try it. Who art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. It's all about praise and worship. Before praying, thy king, thy come, thy will be done on earth. As it is heaven, forgive us at that trespasses or the debt as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from all evil. For thine is thy praise. So you see, you're ending it. Any prayer you won't wrap up with thanksgiving, praise, and worship. You start with it, you end with it. That prayer will not go far. Did you understand that? So you kept before God. You are conscious of this. I said in the first service, you cannot, you can thank a man, you can praise a man, but you can never worship a man. It's only God that you can worship. Holy are the Lord of creation, cause you Lord, what is your name? We worship your majesty awesome God how great thou art you are God mighty are your miracles standing up of your holiness Lord we bow and worship even if you are God somebody comes to you like this will you not give him attention are you getting what I'm talking about but some people say no I must bombard heaven I must reach heaven today after sweating <laughs> just go stay time there is a protocol. There is a heavenly protocol. Are you getting me now? And when you understand it, you begin to get answers in prayer. Please, next time you go to pray, make greater percentage of the prayer thanksgiving, praise, and worship. As a matter of fact, in the realm of worship, God begins to look for you. You're not looking for him again. Are you getting me now? God seeks for those who worship him in truth and in spirit. God will begin to, in prayer, you are looking for God. But when you come to the realm of worship, God will begin to look for you. My son, what do you want? He, he will decorate you. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Number two, you must come to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. You come to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't come in your name. Your name may not be able to open the door. We must come to the Father. Look at it. The Father again. Which connote relationship. That's why if they are telling you to have relationship, personal relationship with God, people don't understand it. You are not spiritual except you have a personal relationship with God. Find out from people. Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. What do you know about this, your father? Daniel said, They that do know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploit. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. <laughs> what do you know about him? You must have a relationship. We have not received the spirit of fear of bondage to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry. Abba, Father. Romans 8, 15. And I told them, in the first, Abba, Father. Abba means Daddy. You must relate with God that way. So you are coming to your Father in the name of Jesus. You may not be qualified, but that name qualifies you. The name of Jesus. And you know why you need to have a relationship? The name of the Lord is for the righteous. The name of the Lord, a strong tower, the righteous run into him. They are saved. Proverbs 18 by 10. 
the name of the Lord, a strong tower, the righteous run into him, and they are saved. So if you are not righteous, if you are living in sin, you can't do that. You too, you know, when you were in school and you didn't get good results, when you are coming back, you started walking with two, two, two left legs. You wait whether anybody is in the house. Because you know they will knock your head because you are fed. You won't even tell anybody. You go and hide the results. They say, ah, they've not brought your result from school. You say, they're still working on it. If it's the day you did well, from the gate, you throw it to the house. Way! Not everybody know you pass. <laughs> you see? That's why it's not good to live in sin because you will not have boldness. I will come to that actually. Hmm? So you, you need to understand this. But you are coming to God in the name of Jesus. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have ordained you that you go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit will remain. And if you ask anything in my name, it will be done. So we are asking in the name of Jesus. Don't pray any prayer without the stamp of that name. That name is like the password in your computer or your laptop or your phone. Amen. Without that password, it won't open. No matter who tries to enter, without that password, he said, mm -mm, I know they open. The same way, when you are praying to the Father, without the name of Jesus, I told them the first service is like a signature you sign on your check. Even when the signature is irregular, they will return it to you. So, without that name of Jesus, it's like a visa you are taking to another country. Without the visa, they won't give you access. Without the name of Jesus, you can't have access to the Father and to the blessings or the things you are looking for. John 14, 12 to 14. Okay, let me just take it from 13 and 14. John 14, 13 to 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, how many things? Including your own. Whatsoever thing you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. Let's read together. I want to go. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Look at an open check. Feel it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Some, some translation said, I will create it. Even if it doesn't exist, I will create it. That's how powerful that name is. That's why you must know. You must be righteous to use that name. Don't be like the sons of Skiva that say, We are joy in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. The, the demon said, I will know Paul, you mentioned. We know Jesus. You, where is your ID card? The name must be used in faith also. Don't just use it, use it in faith. Some use the name out of fear. Huh? More to enter gallop. Hmm? The vehicle there enter gallop. Jesus, Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood him. Out of fear, not out of faith. Cockroach passing the ceiling. The blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost, fire. Don't allow the devil to give you prayer points. Oh. And I pray for you. May the devil never give you prayer points. In Jesus' name. But the fearful, they always receive prayer points from the devil. Number three, we must come with full assurance of faith. We must come with what? Full assurance of faith. I've told us now, I think it was on Wednesday, within the course of the week or Monday, I told us here that the, the content of your prayer matters. One of the major content of prayer is faith, another one is the word of God, another is the heart. You must come with full assurance of faith. That means your, your heart must be there and you must believe. Because whatever you don't believe, you can't God, you have not given God license to perform it. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things spoken to her from the Lord. Luke 145. James 1 5 to 8. 
The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, you can also, if any man lack husband, if any man lack wife, if any man lack head, if any man lack promotion, if any man lack posting, like what had here now, if any man lack anything, say, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally and operate it not, and it shall be given to him. Many are not receiving because they are not asking. They are seeing no brother of the prodigal son. But look at it, verse 6. Please come with me. Take it. Verse 6. He said, But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in what? Anything you don't ask in faith, you can't receive because without faith, you can't move God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards with answers. Then you must believe that he is. For without faith, it is impossible. It's impossible to move God to action. It is your faith that moves God. Anywhere God sees faith, he moves. <laughs> a man, the Roman centurion, told Jesus, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Speak your word. My servant shall be here. Jesus said, I've not seen this kind of faith before. <laughs> I'm in Israel. And Jesus spoke immediately. The servant got healed. Jesus called it great faith. So, you need faith. And faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. You see why you need to study to be feeding your spirit, man? Romans 10, 17. So, as you are feeding your spirit, man, faith comes. Faith comes by understanding. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. When you understand, mm, is it like this? Now I know. Mm, you see, faith comes. So let him ask in faith, not wavering. Many waver a lot. That's why they don't get results. They waver a lot. For he that wavered is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. Should I? Should I not? If I pray, he go answer or he no go answer. Is it his way or not his way? As you are wavering like that. It's not good. So your heart must be fixed. The gospel was preached to us as well as unto them. But the gospel did not profit them because they didn't miss it with faith in them that had it. So the faith content is vital for your profiting. Hebrews 4 2. So don't come to God without the assurance of faith. Hebrews 10 22 to 23. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful the promise. You must judge God faithful. Sarah judged God faithful even when she was old and past the age of bearing but God turned her mama paws around. She became fruitful at the age of 90 because she judged God faithful. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God with unbelief. He was strong in faith giving glory to God. God works with those who believe if you're a doubter, you can't. He said, this kind go away not out. They said by prayer and fasting. How did you not cast it out? He said, because of your own belief. But if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed and be cast yonder. It will obey you. And nothing shall be impossible to you. For this kind go away not out. He said by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 19 to 21. Well, Number four, who must come boldly and not beggarly. Help me tell you, never come boldly. In the name of Jesus, don't ever come to your father again like a beggar. If you're a true child of the house, you don't come there to beg. If you are truly a child of your father, do you behave like an orphan in the house? So why will you be coming to God in prayer? You'll be begging. Father, I beg you, in the name of Jesus, if it is thy will, let me get promoted. 
You are wasting God's time, wasting your time. That's not how to pray. <laughs> you come boldly. Quit me. For you to come boldly, you must be sure of what you are doing. You see why it's important also for you to know the scriptures and know what God has said. So He gives you boldness to come before Him. And it's important for you to be righteous too. Because righteousness makes you bold. Proverbs 28, verse 1 said, The wicked flee when no one pursues. But the righteous is as bold as a lion. Now listen to me. The lion is not the strongest animal in the bush. The uh, lion is not the biggest. The lion is not the smartest. The lion is not the fastest. But why is he the king of the forest? Because of his boldness. A lion seeds elephant now. All is going on. This one is lunch. And you will try it. <laughs> you will try the elephant. Have you seen that before? I like watching this uh, geographical whatever channel. Because I learned from lecture. It's the attitude of the lion that makes it the leader. So you must have that attitude. Confidence and boldness. What is the difference between the prodigal son and his brother? You may say the boy wasted his substance in, 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 in riotous living. That's another story altogether. But he was confident and bold to come to the father. Give me what belongs to me in this house. <laughs> Did the father argue with him? No. The father gave him. Okay, how about the senior brother? That everything was remaining. He was his own. He couldn't ask him. And he suffered loss because when the brother came back from his life, they say carried his clothes, carried it, the fattest car he had been keeping since. I ain't into one eye. They say carried it and gave it to his brother. His ring was what they gave to his brother. There was nothing remaining for the brother in the house. Everything they gave the brother was his own. What was his problem? The father said, All I have is dying. They didn't know how to ask. And when you ask, ask big. Let me tell you, remember, ask big. big. Many of us go to God to ask for small, small things. God, if you can give me a salary of 3,000. <laughs> I'm okay like that. Ask for big things. Ask. That's why I used to tell you here there's nothing you ask God that will intimidate Him. He's able to do above. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you may ever ask or think. So there's nothing, even the one you have not imagined, God is able to do it. Ephesians 3 20. So why are you going there and then asking him for small, small thing? Hmm? God, if you can just give me a house rent. Can't you ask him to give you a house? The woman, the 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 the, 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 the midwives, they were not born again. Because they fear God, God made them houses. You will not die a tenant in Jesus' name. Ask for big, big things. God can give you a oversized blessing. He's a very omnipotent God, omniscient, omni, 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 mini God. So why are you asking for? Some? <laughs> God, if, if only I can get TP. That's a waste of executive time. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. There are two things you can obtain in prayer. Number one is mercy. Mercy take care of your past. Number two is grace. Grace take care of your today and your tomorrow. They are all obtainable from prayer. That's favor and restoration. And that's the two ways God blesses us. He won't bless you outside those two ways. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. He won't pass that. But for you to get it, it should not come beggarly. Come what? Both. Now, many of us, we are parents here. If you have a house boy or a house girl, the way they relate with you is different from how your son or your daughter will relate with you. True or false? 
Okay, all of you here now, you are, all of you here, you are my children, no, spiritually. Is it okay? But I have biological children. Hmm? If I'm even in the office, you may be there waiting. My child will come and walk to me and say, Daddy, I want to eat. Oh. <laughs> and I won't flog him. If I have money there, I will give him, go and eat. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Are you getting something? Okay, if your child comes to you and says, Daddy, today is my bad day. I want a treat. Will you say, get out? Stupid boy. Get out! You will not do that. He said, what do you want? He said, I want cake. He said, won't you add, you yourself will be not asking, won't you add drink to it? Are you seeing now? Because you are daddy enough. And to show you how the children have faith in you, they will even go and tell their friend, I know in this my bad day, my daddy will buy me a rope <laughs> That's the faith they have in you. So why are you coming to God like a beggar? If they tell your child to pay school fees, your child will walk to you even if you are with your friend. That day you have not paid school fees. Why? They told us to bring school fees on Monday. Daddy, please pay the school fees. Your child will tell you like that. Without blinking an eye. But your house girl or house boy will not do that. School fees have been due since three months. The day is too much. She will come to you. She will walk around first. You have to ask, is there any problem? And, and, and. The school fees. They say we should bring it. Are you getting a message? Don't behave like an orphan before your father. Come to him with boldness. Your approach determines your response. The response. They say, if you approach somebody with a smile now, the person will answer you gently. If you approach somebody with fight, the person will also react. Are you getting me now? So your approach, if you come to God boldly, you will receive bold answers. Approach determines response. And you approach to him. But if you approach boldly, we determine whether you end the reproach or you come out of the reproach. So please, come to him boldly. Anyway, today is a covenant of exemption. God is still exempting his people. He's still exempting his people. Exodus 10, 21 to 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand towards heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be fed. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days they saw not one another, neither rose anyone from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. When others will be in darkness, you will have light. No form of darkness will be able to consume you. Exemption, we said, is. God severing between his people that serve him and them that serve him not. That's in a context. Making a distinction. Making a demarcation. Drawing a line. So, what others suffer, you will not suffer it. Exemption also can mean being highly preferred. That if there are, that the testimony you had, three people quoted for the job, his own was one million higher, but they see it chose him. <laughs> As an exemption, God changing rules, changing laws to favor your cause. They will change rules to favor you. Yeah. But we saw this darkness came upon Egypt, but God's people had light. Self made distinction. Exemption. So it doesn't matter the darkness coming upon the earth, you will have light. He said, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Darkness will cover the growth the earth and growth darkness the people. But the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. He said, Gentiles will come to your light. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Hear me. You will begin to be a man, a woman of influence. A man, a woman of attraction. Somebody is here. God is giving you global influence. 
Your light will so shine that men will see your good work and come to your father. In that family, you'll be a light. In that organization, you'll be a light. In that establishment, you'll be a light. Exodus 11, 6 to 7. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So exemption is God putting a difference. My case is different, I be go begin. My case is different, I go the shakara. My case is different, favor is my name, oh. My God, he day, he day, he day, he day. Tell me my case is different. Uh -huh. So while others are saying there's a casting down, you'll be saying there's a lifting up. Did you hear the testimony of that woman? The husband was not receiving salary. She was not receiving salary, but the idea God gave her for a business was what was sustaining them. And now from that same shop, now he had turned to a supermarket. Koro or no koro? Your case is different. In scriptures also we discover that every generation experienced their own famine. So our own is not new. Are you getting me now? I said, oh, our own has not gotten worse. You know, there was a time they were feeding, they were eating their children. Mm -hmm. Now, Jacob experienced it, Isaac experienced it, Abraham experienced it, Joseph experienced it. In Genesis 26 verse 1, it said there was another famine beside the one that was in the time of Abraham to show to you every generation will experience their own. But in the midst of it, Isaac went forward. He sowed in the land. He went forward. He was great. He became great. He, he, he had a star servant. And then the Philistines envied him. They envied him. What was the secret? God gave him direction. He became, he became you know, a man that was into irrigation farming. It was God that showed him. He said, stay here. I will show you what to do. And in prayer and fasting, God said, he will give you direction. In this 21-day prayer and fasting, God will show you what to do. So regardless of the famine on the earth, you will be exempted. In that time of Jacob, there was no food. He didn't send to Egypt to go and buy food. But he had plenty of money. As a matter of fact, when they were going the second time, he said, carry choice fruits and go and give the man. You see, give us, never lie. You know, the man, even in, in the midst of famine, he had what to give us gifts. So it is a choice. It's a choice. So go and give him gifts. He had bags of money in his house. So the bank was in his house in the midst of famine. The righteous don't beg. You will not beg. In the name of Jesus. You will not beg. In the midst of the famine, the people told Joseph, come and buy us, buy our land, buy our cattle, buy everything. But in the midst of it, in Goshen, Genesis 40, 47, verse 27, the people of God were having abundance. They were multiplying. They were growing in the same environment. So please, don't allow any news of evil to affect you. Your case is different. So the same people's business are collapsing minus mine. Everybody is being infected, minus me. Because it's what you say that matters. You'll be exempted from famine. You're exempted from holocaust and destruction. In the name of Jesus. Now look at this, and that's the good news I have for you. Job 5, 19 to 22. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when he cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Amen. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. So when you see something that is not like what you want, just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> laugh. Because in famine and destruction he said thou shalt laugh. If you are born again child of God and you are in the covenant, then know that you are exempted from the economic crisis of the day. Because God will not break his covenant nor alter anything that gone out of his lips. Psalm 84, 89 verse 34. Romans 10, 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. 
for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. If God has seen our covenant fathers true, even in time of our mind, he will see you true. Remember he said he will give you the power to make words that you may establish the covenant he has made to our fathers. That covenant is stronger than any climate. That power to get, receive it in Jesus' name. Quickly, as we close, how do I actualize my exemption heritage? How? Number one, you must get a revelation of your exemption heritage in Christ. Acts 20, 32. Brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So there's an inheritance for you, and that inheritance of exemption is included. That's why your knowledge of the truth is vital. They that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Daniel eleven thirty two. Which kind of knowledge you need to have? Knowledge of exemption. Psalm 91 verse 10. There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Look at the word used here. He didn't use will. He didn't see, use men. Eh? You see, there shall is a word of certainty, word of commandment. There shall no evil before thee. So go with that consciousness. No evil will come near you. You are not the one evil is looking for. Number two, you must keep the love of God alive in your heart. Keep the love of God alive in your heart. Psalm 91 verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. When you carry the love of God in your heart, all things work together for your good. Ask Joseph when you see him. Ask Job when you see him. But you see, this love is called the perfect love of God. It casteth away every fear. First John 4.18 for there is no fear in law. For perfect love casted away fear. I like new uh, international version. He said, perfect love drives away fear. So stop that fear. Stop the fear of accident. Many people, they open the door to the evil that happened to them. Stop the fear of failure. Stop the fear that they will steal your money. Stop the fear of untimely death. The fear of losses. The fear of failure. Some call it phobia. That your phobia is coming to an end today. Job said the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. So deal with that fear. One day somebody told me something. I was, I was taken aback on how people can fear. He wasn't married though. He said, Pastor, check for me if I marry. Will I have a child? You're not married here too. He's afraid. Do you know most of the things you fear are things that is fake evidence you appear in real. Fear is like a mirage. When you are driving on the road, you see a pool of water. When you get close, it disappears. You are afraid of what will never happen. Please, don't waste your life worrying about what you shouldn't worry about. Number three, you must engage the covenant of seed time and harvest. Save me seed time and harvest. Yes. Psalm 41, 1 to 3. Blessed is he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in sickness. This is God taking care of, taking the program for anyone that is working in the covenant. Ephesians 6, 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing a man doeth, the same he shall receive of the Lord, whether he be born or free. So keep doing good. Give when you're supposed to give. Pay your tithe, your offering, the things you're supposed to do, and you're, you're operating in the covenant, and God will open doors for you. Ezekiel 44, verse 30. And the first of all, the first fruit of all things, and every oblation of all, 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 of every sort of your oblation, shall be the priest. Ye shall also give unto the priest the face of your door, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. It is blessing that put causes on a reverse. It's blessing that overtakes causes. So if you know what to do for you to be blessed, do it. It is the value you place on God that determines what you give to him. And what you do to God determines what God does to you. He said, return to me, I'll return to you. <laughs> draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. When you understand how to honor God and to honor people and you engage faithfully in it, your financial status will not only change positively, it will multiply. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. 
honor the Lord with your substance, not your leftover, and the first fruit of your increase. And then the Lord will, he said, he will cause your bounds to be filled with plenty. May God give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. One thing I know is that covenant people will always flourish in hard times. And finally, number four, speak openly of your exemption right. Help me tell you, neighbor, speak openly of your exemption right. Why? Your power as a Christian is in your mouth. If you don't know how to use this mouth, you are finished. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Sound makers are sign carriers. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Poverty and prosperity is in the mouth of the tongue. Sickness and health is in the mouth of the, the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And death that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you love this law, you, you partake of the fruit. So mind what you say with your mouth. So if others are saying no market, oh, 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 oh they pay on time, oh, uh, this one now, don't join them. Minus me. Are you getting me now? He said, everybody, oh, they don't catch this. Do you know this corona? Everybody don't catch up. Now lie. Minus me. Don't say confederacy to what they say, confederacy. He said, don't fear their fear. Don't join them to say what is not good, though. You know, some people that want bewitching themselves. Bewitching themselves, they cost themselves. They say with a patch and they leak. Are you a spiritual organizer? Pastor, if you know now, everywhere just they dry. Who told you? Did you not see people building houses? Yeah? Check your street. Is somebody not building house there? If everywhere is dry, then why are they building house? So can't you see you're a liar? Some of you come and tell you, Pastor, I mean it. Nothing is working. I swear, nothing is working. And the amount you using to swear is working. Your mouth is, your miracle is in your mouth, oh. Help me tell you, nobody has a miracle in your mouth. Uh -huh. So use it well. Never say anything again you don't like with your mouth against yourself, against your children, against your spouse. Don't come and tell me your husband is a man. You, you lose respect. Or you're a woman. You lose respect instantly before me. That means you are Mr. or Mrs. Yeye. Because somebody, you have shared the virus. He said, I will give you a mouth and the wisdom that your enemy cannot get so easy. So somebody said over their dead body, you will not marry, you will not build house, you will not, you will not sell in this place. Tell them you are a dead man. You have concluded your case. The person will come and beg you. I bet you the person will come and beg you later. He said, I don't know you are powerful like this. But you now said, he said, come to pastor. Pastor, pray hot prayer. That woman is a notorious witch. I know how many people she has killed. Pastor, let the prayer be hot. Oh. No. The first aid treatment to whatever the devil is saying is, what are you saying? You must say something back. Fake person, fake prophet, or fake anybody come and tell you, if you don't bring goat, you will die. And you kept quiet. If the demon can make it happen, no? So you say, I cannot die. I will live to declare the word of the law. So what are you replying? When the devil came to Jesus, you know, Jesus was saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. You think Jesus didn't know what he was doing? So don't join them to say it. He said, hey, Pastor, it's because of the sun. It's because of night. It's because of mosquito. That's why I'm having... Mosquito is biting people in prison. They don't have a malaria. So are you ready to say something today? Are you ready to say something? You must say something about your life. Every day you wake up, say something. Do you understand? Now let me give you this testimony. How many of us know Joel Austin? The mother is still alive. She's called Dodi Austin. One day doctors gave her death sentence that she will live only six days and die because of terminal cancer. The woman said, I know go die she went back and searched over 40 scriptures why she should not die, why she should be healed. And she began to speak it, declare it. As I'm talking to you today, she's alive. Even all the pastors that prayed for her, including the husband, they've died. All of them, they've died. The woman is still alive. Almost 40 years. Eh? She's still alive as I'm talking to you now. So mind what you say with your mouth. 
your wife come and say uh, food is finished tell her to shut up who told you food can't finish in this house your children come and say no more soap tell them crap there's plenty of soap here are you getting me now <laughs> mind what you say with your mouth don't join them they ah he said no money in my pocket though who told you some of you have atm that you don't have money in your pocket doesn't mean you don't have money rise on your feet don't ever say again i don't have money or anytime they mention money your, your heart will take off we we'll have to be bleeding the blood to bring it back <laughs> you know many people are afraid of money that's why money is running from them you need to mess money up so that we will be coming to you mess it up mess money up are you getting me now don't have regard for money oh. if you if you fear money money will be far from you you will never be rich Glory to God. <laughs> Has somebody been blessed? Now, in a short while, we're going to, to speak. Be ready to speak. The things you want and the things you don't want, you cause it. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, He's my God in whom I trust. After saying that, you know what the Bible said? Say, No evil shall be for you. <laughs> <laughs> Check the Bible. He said that in verse 2. In verse 10, he said, No evil shall be for you. <laughs> if he has said hey, everything that is happening in this world is coming on my head, oh God, he said, I remove myself. Strangers will hear of you and they will fade away. They are still there because they've not heard of you. Some 18, 44 to 45. Certain things are still run around you because they've not heard you say anything. Go back to that your shop and speak what you want. Hear me, I have a, I have agreement of how much money was entered my hand every week. Oh. And I speak it and it happens. Are you getting me now? And if you like, stay there. Don't use your own mouth. Be using it to gossip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your power is in your mouth. The day I understood that the power of a Christian is in the mouth. I've seen one miracle happen through this mouth than any other means. Are you not saying it in this church? Pastor say, pastor say, pastor say. If I don't say it, God has no raw material to produce anything. He confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messenger. So go back and give raw material. Go, go and give God raw materials to perform miracles in your life. So stop bewitching yourself. Others are speaking against you, talking against you, working against you. You now join them to do it? No. That's foolishness. Somebody may tell you that you're a stupid person. You go back. Am I, I'm not stupid. I'm the, I'm the wisest person on this world, in this world. He, the person has not seen me. I'm work in progress. When I've got finished with me, you will see. <laughs> and you go your way. Then you I go back and cry. God, you mean, you mean, you mean, you mean I'm stupid. Am I really stupid? Oh, God. Oh. Because you don't know who you are. Amen. Glory to God. You will not be cast down again. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, I want to give opportunity to some people here right now. Right now. You need to make up your mind to go with Jesus. Jesus came to bless us. Acts chapter 3 verse 26. So, when you reject Jesus, you have rejected blessing. And it's the blessing of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow. So, somebody is here today. You want to accept Jesus Christ that was sent to bless us. God sent him to you and I to bless us. Don't reject him. Somebody is here. You want to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior right now. Please put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer with me. Somebody is here also. You gave your life to Jesus someday. Yes, you did. Sincerely, you did. But right now, you know you are not there. You can't feel God. You don't have peace. You don't have joy. Because even the blessings are far off. Why can't you return to him and let things go well for you? Somebody is also here struggling with certain evil habits. You can't share it with your husband or your wife, with anybody. But you know it. Down today, up tomorrow. Misfortune here and misfortune there. And you want to say, Jesus, I'm tired of this. I want to be free. Jesus set me free. New Year resolution didn't set me free. Jesus set me free. You are among this category of people I mentioned. Please put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart you are the only son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. I am born again. I am a child of God.